So the other day we had some really nice weather and we went out to the pasture and we were testing our raw cotton black powder. I mean, antique muzzle loading propellant. And I loaded up 25 grains in my Uberti Remington New Model Army with a Hornady swaged 454 round ball. And I capped it with an RWS 1075 cap and I cocked it and I took aim and I fired and everything seemed to go pretty well until uh, after I was done and I realized I had only fired five shots and I turned and I looked at Derek and I said, did this junk just chain fire? And sure enough, after we looked at the footage, sure enough, had a chain fire on the first shot. Now, I've had four chain fires in my black powder career. The first one was in that Remington Army San Marco up there. The second one was in my Uberti Walker. The third was in an original double action star. And the fourth one was in this right here. Now, the debate about chain fires has been raging throughout space and time from the beginning of time to date. And people really, really take this shit seriously. Now, in the four chain fires that I have had, I can tell you that uh, really the only thing that has hurt is my pride. The firearms, none of them, were harmed in any way because... In my experience, I have heard horror stories from other folks. Generally, what happens is one of the chambers on either side of the barrel is the one that fires. So there's, there's nothing in the way there other than it blows a bunch of powder and skips off the side. Now, if you have a chain fire where all of them go off, especially the bottom one, I could see how that could be a problem. So it is something that's you know, serious enough, you don't want it to happen. But in the four times it's happened to me, nothing's really harmed as far as the firearm goes. Now, I know there are people that will swear on a stack of Bibles and proclaim that we know that chain fires come from the cap side. We know that they come from the nipple side. We know this. I don't know how they claim to know this, I have heard in the comments from people that cite a particular video that was done in Germany or something in the early days of really slow motion stuff where they could see that when it fired, it had something to do back there and that's where it came from. I have never seen this video. I have looked for it. If someone out there watching this has it, send me a link. I would really like to see it. Because I hear people reference it all the time, and I've never been able to find it. Now, when I was 17, I bought my first cap and ball revolver. It was a Pieta 1860 Army. I bought it from Dixie Gunworks, and I'm pretty sure it was like 189 bucks, 179 bucks, or something like that. And I shot that thing every day for a couple years. Every day. I'd get home from school, and then after I graduated high school, I'd get home from work, I'd go out back and I'd put at least 24 shots through that thing. Now, back then I was using Pyrodex because I didn't know any better. I repent. And I was using felt wads. I also was using a 451 diameter ball because that's what they had at the local gun shop. And I shot, I probably put more rounds through that particular revolver than any of my other revolvers, because I, I, just, I just shot the hell out of it, and I wore it out more than a few times. I broke it I don't know how many times. I would buy like a pack of four hands, you know, with springs, trigger springs, all, all that stuff, you know, all those things that just broke all the time. They're a lot better now, it seemed to be. Uh, but I put more rounds through that than I probably have any of my other cap and ball revolvers. And uh, I'm not telling you this, so I could be like, you know, oh, nobody shoots more than me. I'm sure plenty of people do. But a lot of times when I say, oh, I've had four chain fires, 
I'll get a comment from somebody going, oh, well, obviously you're a freaking noob and you don't know what you're doing and you're not loading your gun right and all that stuff. Yeah, okay, well, that, uh, that may or may not be the case. But they'll say something like, I've been shooting black powder guns for 50 years and I've never had a chain fire. Okay, glad to hear it. How often do you shoot? Well, you know, once or twice a year, I'll drag my 1858 Remington out and, you know, put six or 12 shots through it. Okay, glad to hear it. Always glad to see uh, black powder people out there shooting their black powder guns. Again, I'm not saying that I shoot more than anybody else, but I think I probably put more rounds through a cap and ball revolver in a month than a lot of people do in a decade. Okay, maybe not a decade, a year. Again, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that shoot a hell of a lot more than me, but just because I'm not 75 years old and all that stuff doesn't mean I don't have a fair amount of experience doing this. Now, in my not-so-humble opinion based on my experience, I am leaning towards chain fires originate from the front. Now, I wouldn't come out and make a statement like they only come from the front. I could see how it could happen from the cone side. I just don't think it's nearly as probable as it coming from the front. The front is where all of the smoke, pressure, and fire and flame is happening. If you don't have the proper size ball for your chamber and it doesn't have a nice tight seal, I think that's probably a lot more likely than what a lot of folks say is your cap either fell off or it's a loose fitting cap or you had to pinch your cap to get it to stay on or something and there's some breach back here that allows it to fire. Personally, I think it's a lot more likely that it comes from the front. Now, the reason why I feel this way is not just based off of what I think, my experience as well. In the four chain fires that I have had throughout my cap and ball career, I can tell you that all those chain fires, I did not have any grease or lubricant on the chamber mouths. I know there are a lot of people that seem to think that that is an abhorrent practice. And they usually cite the historical accuracy gods on why you shouldn't do that. Most of my regulars probably have realized that I'm not one for historical accuracy. I'm not a stickler on that. I do keep historical accuracy and context in mind in a lot of my tests and a lot of the things that I do. I am always more concerned with what gives me the best results here and now in March of 2025 than how Corporal so-and-so would have done it in 1861. I'm more concerned with how it works for me than it did for Corporal so-and-so. Maybe that makes me selfish. I don't know. So typically when we're just out shooting, I will use SPG lube on the chamber mounts after it's loaded. You don't have to like it. There's two reasons why I do that. The first is it actually does help to prevent a chain fire. I know people will swear on a stack of Bibles, again, that it doesn't do anything. It does nothing. And I've heard people get really, really worked up about this stuff. We did some tests a couple years ago using the walker where we were able to conclude that you can use grease like SPG lube or homemade black powder lube, which at that time we were using, I think, 60, 40 lamb's tallow and beeswax. I find SPG lube is just as good. To seal your chamber mouths up, we actually loaded, I think it was 50 or 60 grains, put a felt wad on top of it, and then greased them over, and we could not get it to chain fire. Again, there was no ball loaded in there, in case you're wondering. Now, if we just used powder and a felt wad, it chain fired both of them on either side of the barrel. Now, I suppose someone could say, you only have to worry about that if you're not using the proper size ball. Okay, fair enough. I use 454 balls in all of my 44 caliber stuff. I do cast my own balls that I use for plinking out in the pasture. Anytime I do a test, a powder test, or shoot any kind of competition, 
I always use a Hornady 454 swaged ball. So most of the stuff you guys see us do is with a swaged 454 diameter ball. In this particular revolver, that 454 ball does not really cut a nice ring of lead. In fact, it's a little spotty. Let me show you. Now, the reason why I think this is important is because the first chain fire I ever had with that Remington up there, it has tapered chambers. Well, had tapered chambers. No, it still has a couple of them left, I think. So it didn't cut any lead at all. You could drop a 457 ball in there and it didn't cut any lead at all. In fact, when that one chain fired, I had both chambers on either side of the barrel go off. And so in order for it to not chain fire, I'd have to grease the chamber mouths with my homemade black powder lube. The second time I had a chain fire in the Walker, I was using cast lead balls, which a cast lead ball from these Lee molds that I like to use will leave what's called a sprue. And what I think happened with that one, and again, I didn't have any lube on the chamber mouths, is I think I had that sprue sideways in the chamber. And so when I pressed it down, I think I had a breach. And I think that's why I had that chain fire. Again, I was not using any lube. The third chain fire I had was in Tom's double action star revolver, which has tapered chambers that are way more tapered than those. I forget what I, I did mic them. And I think the opening was 468 or something. And they tapered down to about 451. But I mean, a good three quarters of an inch down into the chamber. And I had a chain fire with that one. Now that was a little bit different because we were using considerably undersized balls and I was greasing the chamber mouths, again, trying to prevent a chain fire. We had then switched to, I believe we're using a Kerr uh, uh, conical from Era's Gone Bullet Molds. And I didn't grease them. And on the last shot or the last, the last six, I guess, I had a chain fire. Again, no grease on the chamber mouths. Now with the star, we did have some strange cap issues. The cones on the star were ridiculously small. I was having to pinch the caps almost in half. Well, half the diameter. I think you get the idea. To get those things to stay. But even when we did have the chain fire, we were using CCI 10s, which fit better, but still not even close to the appropriate size. I still had to pinch them to get them to stay. Most of my regulars have seen me load and fire my cap and ball revolvers, and a lot of people gave me a hard time about it because after I get them all capped up, you'll see me hold my weapon down range. I generally will hold the barrel like this. I will drop the hammer down gently and push forward on the hammer and make sure those caps are seated on there all the way as nice and tight and firm as I can get them. You guys have probably been to a public range or at your black powder meet where somebody gets their black powder pistol out, they load it up, they put it, the caps on, and they fire a couple shots, and all of the other caps have popped off and fell off due to recoil. I find that if you give them a good shove, you could use a wooden dowel. I just find it's easier to use the hammer as long as your weapon is downrange. A lot of people give me a hard time because they see my wrist too close here. And they say things like, you know, if that ever went off, it'll laser your wrist right off. <laughs> Thank you for your concern. I, I appreciate it. But I like to make sure they're seated all the way up there. I wasn't really doing that with the star. I, I, I was seating them as, as best as I could. But since they were so damn loose, eh, it just wasn't all that great. Also, the star doesn't have any protection around those cones like a Remington or a Colt reproduction. Those cones on the star cylinder are completely exposed. So I think that would increase the odds of a chain fire coming from that side. And then finally, the fourth chain fire brings me to this Remington right here, which as you can see, even using a 454 ball, this does not cut a nice ring of lead not using a 454 ball anyway. Now, usually when I mention this kind of stuff, people say, well, you're using the wrong size ball. You need to use a 457. 
And yeah, I would imagine a 457 would cut a nicer ring of lead. But I don't want to have to buy another set of balls just for one. That sounded weird. But I don't want to have to buy specific diameter balls for one stupid revolver. Not if I can just apply some SPG lube over it and get around it entirely. As far as how this performed in that video, it seemed really, really lousy, and I think there's a reason for that. We took this out yesterday, before it was raining like a crazy, and we loaded it with 30 grains of the same powder and bench rested it, and it shot great. It shot just as good as it usually does. This thing seems to do pretty well as long as you can get the ball moving around 850 or 900 feet per second. It seems to shoot really well. And again, I was greasing the chamber mouths. Did I mention the other reason for greasing the chamber mouths? Is to keep the fouling soft. Why do you want soft fouling? So you can maintain accuracy. Now, Hugh, if you're watching this, I'm not trying to pick a fight, but you said something to me the other day that I thought was kind of funny. We were talking about the heel-based bullets. And you said, oh, well, you know, the, 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 the loop doesn't affect the accuracy at all other than the fouling being hard, which affects the accuracy. I would argue that in a roundabout way, that would affect the accuracy. This is something I've seen with black powder cartridge is if you just buy whatever Rimrock bullet or whatever, melt the smokeless lube off, dip lube them, after you get 10 or 15 shots through it, you'll see it'll start to widen up and it'll only get worse from there because you're getting more fouling in there, you don't have nearly enough lube and it gets harder and baked in there. And then pretty soon, you're pretty much getting a smooth bore accuracy after 25 or 30 shots, unless you're doing some really, really mm, specific things. So I'm a big believer in more lubricant, the better when it comes to black powder anything, whether it's cap and ball revolvers, black powder cartridge, all of that stuff. There is one circumstance that I can think of where Old Ranger was shooting, I think it was a Navy, a 51 Navy. And he always uses lube. He has a really cool grease gun looking thing um, where he applies it a lot more cleaner than just grabbing a chunk of it and smearing it on there like I do. And he had a chain fire and he got it on camera. I'll see if I can find it. I'll put it in here. How, how would he have a chain fire? You know, if he's using the proper size balls and he's got the grease on there, how do you have a chain fire? Well, I, unless something really uh, miraculous happened coming from the front, I don't know, or it did come from the back one way or another. But I know this is a hot topic for a lot of people. So if you're ready to fight in the comment section, I'll see you there. So as usual, folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button, consider subscribing, and if you did think it sucked, go have your own chain fire. Got one left. Oh, you, uh, on the last one. <laughs>